Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. It's something that you will hear talked about quite a lot in the aquarium hobby as it's used for any number of purposes, from cleaning out water butts or cleaning out return pipes for filters or just cleaning tanks in general, or its main use being treating blackbeard algae. Now it will actually treat most types of algae because this stuff is um, it's an oxidizer so it it reacts with organic compounds and when we say treats algae what it does is destroys algae and how it does that is it attacks the cell walls of the algae and breaks it down until it's dead and therefore it goes away and that's exactly what we want but we have to understand what this stuff is because some people will say oh yeah it's dead safe and some people will say it's terribly dangerous but as I say, the chemical compound is H2O2. It's an unstable compound, so that's why it's in this black bottle, because it reacts to light, amongst many other things. Um, H2O2, yes, that is similar, because H2O is obviously water. So it's water with an extra oxygen. And what would happen if you take the lid off a bottle like this and stick it in a bowl, it will eventually degrade, and what you're left with is water. Because water, when it breaks down, it turns into water because it releases that extra oxygen into the atmosphere. And that's essentially what it's doing in here. It's when it's attacking that, and you'll see bubbles coming off sometimes when you're using it. That's the extra oxygen being released. But that doesn't mean it's perfectly safe. It is an irritant for humans. If you spray it on your skin, you may well get a rash if you don't wipe it off quick enough. But people used to use this as an antiseptic in the old days. Um, people use it to whiten their teeth and things like that. Um, but the one that we'll be using today is a hydrogen peroxide, a food grade hydrogen peroxide, uh, which is a 3% solution. So this is 3% hydrogen peroxide and 97% distilled water. Um, so it's important when you are following along with any of this, any of the dosages I give, um, I'm basing them on this, this 3% solution. So if you're using a different type of solution, adjust as required but this is typically what you will get in any shops. You can get these in things like chemists or you can buy it online, I've got these off Amazon um, or eBay, not Amazon. Um, not expensive, fairly cheap and lots of uses as well. So we'll talk a little bit about um, how to use it and the way that you might use it in an aquarium. Uh, I mentioned blackbeard algae earlier, but you can use it against all kinds of algae because it basically will just destroy anything organic that's left long enough Unlike other chemicals that you add to your tank, like I say, this is an unstable compound that wants to break down, so after an amount of time it will just become water and it'll be perfectly safe. That doesn't mean though that you can go mental with it and overdose your tank, because your fish are organic compounds, they will also not like having this stuff in the water in too high a concentration. But over time it will break down and that time isn't going to take long, um, certainly a few hours it should have done its business. There are different ways that we can treat our aquariums with this stuff. I'm not hugely experienced with this, so I'll talk about the, the ones that I use and that's the way I'm going to do it, but there are other ones. Some people will, they talk about the one-two punch method where you will dose your tank, your entire tank with this stuff. Um, so add it to the water column, leave it in there, and then come in afterwards with some liquid carbon products, whether it be Easy Carbo or Seachem Excel and spot dose with that stuff and that seems to be a really effective if slightly harsh way to treat your algae um, you can use a little dropper like this whether it be a syringe or a pipette like this where you know exactly how much you're measuring and you can actually go and spot treat the algae and when we say spot treat all we mean is get down in amongst where the algae is at its worst and scoosh it um, I have gone for the, the spray bottle method and what I like to do is if possible actually remove whatever it is I'm trying to um, treat. Normally I'm doing this on things like ornaments, um, whether it be rocks, whether it's um, filter intakes, heaters, that kind of thing, but sometimes plants. Um, but if I can get the thing out, I will take it out, give it a couple of applications, leave it for, it doesn't take more than five minutes tops, and then rinse it out in a bucket of tank water or something like that, put it back in. Uh, and you'll all have seen it where the, if it is black beard algae that you're treating, it goes red and possibly white, dies off, the fish will eat it, all that kind of stuff, it's fine for them by that point. So they're the, the kind of main applications. Um, I have seen 
a couple of videos on YouTube where people have mixed in other things. Um, whether that's they put the Easy Carbo straight into the mix with the, the hydrogen peroxide, I wouldn't recommend doing that, and it's not something I want to do. Um, but yeah, let's go on and try it out. So if you want to do this yourself, please go and do your own research. The The dosages I've been using have been... I mean, you'll find things online where they say anything from 1 mil to, per gallon to up to 4 mils per gallon, and a gallon is roughly about 4.5 litres or something like that. Um, the treatments I'm going to use are going to be way less than that. So if you've got a hundred gallons, eh, hundred gallons, yeah, Joey DIY. If you've got a hundred liters or something like that, then you know you can get away with about twenty mils worth. Each of these sprays is about um, half a mil to a mil max. So I know that I can go in with twenty to forty sprays, and that I'm still within that safe minimum dosing level. Um, same as if I was adding it to the water column, I'd start with the lowest quality, the lowest dosage, and and ramp my way up from that. And if you're doing whole tank dosages, what I would recommend is this stuff is going to attack all organics. Organics include uh, bacteria, and that's good bacteria, bad bacteria. So if you're going to do the whole tank method, whip your filters off, and stick in some kind of airstone or powerhead to keep the water circulating, and do that, let it um, sit for a while, and then put your filters back in, because you don't want to kill off all your beneficial bacteria. So with that said, Let's get in there. We are going to concentrate on this plant over here. Um, we talked about it before. Um, a little bit of, it's not black beard algae, it's green beard algae, but I'll, you'll get some examples of black beard algae as well and try them out. Uh, but the reason I'm picking this one is because I know I can get it out quite easily. You can see it's a kind of fuzzy green algae. I'm not entirely sure of the specific type of algae that it is. But let's have a go at that. What we could do is drop the water level in the aquarium if it wouldn't come out. Take it down to about 50%, spray it, slowly fill it back up, that would be perfectly safe. But I know that I can get that out easy enough, so let's just do that. So I know some people have commented on uh, previous videos about this not being safe for inverts. I think it is safe for inverts as long as you keep within those safe dosages. Um, but if you... Sorry, I'll just make a mess everywhere. If we have a look at that up close, I think there is some black beard algae in there, but it's not nice. It's covering the plants. It's, I could sit there and tear some of it off. But what we'll do is we'll just give this a good round. See, you can see there are actually healthy leaves here trying to come through. Give this a bit of a spray. Well, I wouldn't normally spray it into the open like this, but just for the benefits of the camera. So five sprays, a lot of that, a lot of that is going to drip off. But we'll just leave that. I mean, it doesn't take more than a few seconds for it to start to work. I could even put it back in the bucket down here and leave it to sit for a few minutes. It would be fine. You can actually hear a slight fizzing. Don't know if that can be heard up there. And if I was to put it in the water, you would see some bubbles. But once I was happy with that, Give it a quick rinse, put it back in the tank, job done. So I've just taken this as an example from another tank that is most definitely black beard algae. Um, not, that, not that you're able to see it that well on the camera. Exactly the same treatment, a couple of sprays. Leave it for a couple of minutes. Rinse it and put it back in. I put them all back in this tank just so you can see the effects and what happens with them. So I've taken out, um, as hopefully you can see down here, I've taken out a piece of wood, a couple of plants on rocks, um, all with algae on them. I've sprayed them, I've left them here for, it's got to be five minutes now. I'm just going to rinse them off in this bucket of tank water and pop them back in here. What you might notice when you immediately do it, especially if they were, especially if they were very badly affected, you might see some bubbles coming off. Um, if you can zoom in and see there, there's actually some bubbles caught underneath the algae. That's the algae, well, that's the hydrogen peroxide trying to oxidise the algae. So that will work its magic and start to release. 
and down here is the one, that, so this is an example of black beard algae, that's what it looks like if it focuses so what I'm looking for here is that will turn red and then pink but usually when it turns red everything else will come along and nibble on it so we'll come back when this has done its work and see how long it took so this is a day later as you can see well, I don't know if you can see, but there's the slightest reddish tinge on the black beard algae on this plant. The most noticeable thing is that the algae has got a much reduced grip on the plant. Some of it's just floated off and it's coming away. It's not stuck firm like it usually is. But I reckon given another 12 hours or so, that would turn red and that would be it, signifying it's completely dead. On the plants up here, uh, so on this one, and this Anubius, same sort of thing is happening where it started to lift off that greenish algae. Um, a couple more of the leaves are fine. Not as much happening up on this top one, so they'll probably give them another dose and see how we go on with them. Um, I could give this another dose. Um, I think the general consensus is you might have to do this for two or three days um, and then you'll see certainly the black beetle algae will turn green and that will start to die off. Uh, but hopefully we'll get some results with this as well. It certainly is starting to make a, a difference on this lower one. And some of the leaves are looking brighter on that top one as well. Uh, so my advice is if you're going to try this, try it um, little and often, rather than trying to overpower your tank and chuck everything in at it. And um, That's when you might run into problems. As you can see, this is a shrimp tank. Uh, I've got shrimp in there doing their thing at the moment. It's not hurting them. Um, because I'm using really low volumes of it. Um, everything's, all the fish are happy, all the shrimp are happy, and the plants are starting to look happier. Um, so we'll get the rest of this off tomorrow. So it's probably been just shy of a week since we started this treatment, but as you can see, all the black beard algae is completely gone off the rock, off the plants. There is still little trace of the green stuff that you can just kind of wipe off and that comes off quite easily um, but unfortunately I missed the stage where it was red because what's happened is it turned red and I thought I'll film that when I come back from work and when I came back from work it was all gone because the fish have eaten it um, so I'll put that back in there for now kind of every other day I was taking it out giving it a little spray and I think it took three treatments for it to actually kill it off on that little sample there. The green stuff, the green algae on here, if you can see that, um, it hasn't taken that quite off, but again, that just kind of wipes off, so you can get in there with a little brush or even just your fingers and just pull that algae off, and that's come off really well. Um, so what I would say is this stuff, it's to be respected rather than feared, so that your hydrogen peroxide, it does work, but it's a much better idea to get your tank in balance but if it gets out of control you can at least give it a bit of a nuking get it back to a level playing field and then you can start to build back up again so i hope that was useful to someone and um, click that subscribe button if you want to see more of this i will do more experiments on some rocks so we can show you that full life cycle it dying off and then hopefully catch the fish eating it um, but if it's useful let me know in the comments uh, if you've got any other tips and tricks of the way you do it yeah, again, let me know in the comments, but click that subscribe button, it really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Hey folks, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff. It's hydrogen... Hey folks, nice to see you again, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff. Hydrogen... Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff. Hydrogen... Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff, hydrogen per... Why am I saying like that? Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this stuff, H2O2. Organics include... Um, what do they include? Organics include um, 